You know, I can't believe I haven't ever talked about this before, but I recently got a comment that got me thinking about the difference between memcopy and memmove, and it also got me thinking about the holy wars and the holy war type rhetoric that comes up in tech. And so today I want to talk about some of the technical differences between these two really useful functions. I also want to talk about some of the cultural issues and pitfalls that you can fall into that might stunt your growth as a programmer. But before we get into it, I wanted to introduce you to Magic Mind. Magic Mind is this little, is it going to focus? There we go. Magic Mind is this little green drink earthy shot. I've been trying it out lately. And Magic Mind is today's video sponsor. This one's a little weird for me because I'm not really much of a beverage guy. I drink water and well, really just water. But I know a lot of you out there are working long hours, lots of stress, not getting enough sleep. And of course, my advice, my first advice is eat better, stress less, sleep more. But I also know that for a lot of people, the answer has been just more caffeine, just pound lots of caffeine. And that often leaves them with more stress, more jitters and other health problems. And that's one of the things that I think is cool about Magic Mind is they're focused on reducing stress, increasing productivity. It's got things like adaptogens, nootropics, which honestly I had to Google. It also has lion's mane mushrooms, which are really cool, and honey, who doesn't like honey? But look, this is definitely not my area of expertise, but if you're looking for a new morning ritual, if you're looking for a coffee alternative, then I've got a link down in the description for 20% off and they have a money back guarantee. So if this is something that's interesting to you, check them out. It's not bad. But now let's get back to memcopy, memmove, and technical holy wars. As I mentioned before, this video is based on a comment. A few weeks ago, I made a video about copying structs and I got the following message. Memcopy is wrong and dangerous. Watch out for bad info on YouTube. If the structure memory locations are overlapped, you must use memmove, not memcopy. So it's the more general solution to the more general problem that was posed. Memcopy is simply wrong and would lead to incorrect results in some situations. Beware! Yeah, it's a bit intense, but aside from the overuse of exclamation points and the overly aggressive tone, there is an interesting and important conversation hiding underneath all of the righteous indignation. And of course, when I saw this, it occurred to me that I've never actually talked about the difference between mem copy and mem move, and I think it's about time. So we're definitely going to talk about that. But I also wanted to make a more general point first, because some of you are new to this field. And if you stick around long enough, you're going to hear stuff like this again. You're going to hear very strong opinions. Whenever you hear someone talking about technology, but their words sound more like early 19th century religious rhetoric, something like programmers in the hands of angry dogma, you know, lots of extreme language, absolutist positions, right versus wrong, good versus evil. If you get the feeling that they are thinking, should I use swords or pitchforks for this one? Then my advice is to take a deep breath and ask yourself why. Of course, why do we have to be so hostile? Why do we have to be such a drama king about it? Because hostile, aggressive, absolutist positions like this, you know, holy war give us a bad name. They drive people away from this field and it's just not good for any of us. Also, it will get you removed from the list for barbecues and parties and other really fun things. But it's also important to take a step back and say, why are they saying this? Where does this tirade come from? Because while there are few paragraphs in the known universe that actually warrant six exclamation points, most tirades do contain some truth and many of those truths are worth understanding. And this is one of those cases, so let's dissect it and jump into the code. So the issue at hand is fairly simple. When copying memory from one place to another, should you use memcopy or memmove? Both look identical, both return a void pointer, both take two pointers, a destination and a source and a number of bytes to copy from the source address to the destination address. The only thing that's different between them is that memmove can handle one case that memcopy can't. That is the case when the memory blocks overlap. So really quick, let's look at this code. Here I have a simple program. We have an array. It has five integers in it. And we have a loop down here, down below, that simply goes through those integers and prints them out. Now let's say that in all of this, let's say that I want to make a function that removes an element from the array. Something like, uh, we'll call it remove element. And let's say we pass in the array the values that we want to delete from. We need to, like most things in C, when we pass in an array, we want to give it the size. So we'll pass in array size. And let's say that I want to delete element two, okay? And maybe while we're at it, again, I'm going to delete element four now. Now, now anytime we're deleting elements in the middle of an array, there's this question of what do we do with that gap? Do we leave a gap or do we slide things over and kind of compress the remaining elements? In this case, that's what I'm going to do. So today, what I'd like to do is to be able, if I delete element two, I would like to slide all of the elements before the deleted element forward so we don't leave a gap. So we're going to slide it all 
together, we're gonna to coalesce. And you could slide them back or you could slide them forward. Today, I'm going to slide them forward. So this seems straightforward enough. Let's come up here and actually define this function. Let's say it's a Boolean, which will just allow us to do some simple error checking. And we can say remove element. We're going to pass in our array, call it ARR, and then have our length, and then our index to remove. So really quick, the only error checking I'm gonna do is say if the index to remove is less than zero or index to remove is greater than or equal to length. Okay, so in either of these cases, you specified an index that you can't remove because it's not a member of this array. It's not, it doesn't fit in the array. And so in this case, we would like to return false. And then now we wanna delete our elements, but you know, we don't really ever delete elements from an array. So what we're really just gonna do is move the other elements over the top of the deleted element. Okay, so in this, so this is a situation where I would definitely call mem move, right? Because we're copying blocks that are overlapping, right? I'm copying one chunk of memory and just sliding it over, but the source and the destination memory overlap. So it's very important here to use mem move. And here I'm going to pass in uh, Array plus one. This is where I'm passing, I'm sliding it to, I'm sliding everything forward one. And we're gonna start at the beginning of the array and we're going to slide everything. So this is the question of how much do we slide forward? So what we're gonna do is do size of int. So the number of ints, that's the size of each of our elements multiplied by index to remove. Okay, so this is basically just saying everything that comes before the index we're removing, we want to slide forward one. So hopefully that's pretty straightforward. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments and maybe I can follow this up with a future video. But then the other thing I wanna do is because we slid everything over, but what do we do with the empty element? And you know, we could just leave it blank, but for now I'm going to say the zeroth element is now going to be zero. Okay, somehow marking that like that I'm filling it with zeros as I slide things over. And then let's return true because we successfully removed our element. So as I mentioned before, this is a case where we wanna use memmove rather than memcopy because memcopy might give us incorrect results. But let's take a look at it. Okay, so we have this example right here. First of all, I'm going to, I'm gonna compile it. So I have a little make file here, very simple, nothing fancy, just like other make files you've seen in my other videos. And we can come down here and compile it, make sure that I didn't make any major mistakes. And if we come in here and run, uh, whoops, it's helpful. Uh, if we run example in here, you can see that it does in fact work. It's sliding everything over to the right as I remove stuff, okay? Now, the problem can come up if we change, let's say we change this mem copy or mem move to mem copy. In this case, we're no longer guaranteed to get correct results. So let's just again, take a look. We compile it and then run it. And well, that's really frustrating mem copy because I was really trying to show your failure case and you didn't comply. So no worries. Let me show you what could have happened. Okay. Because one of the things we're seeing here is that a lot of systems actually generate the same code for memcopy and memmove. So even though I called memcopy, it might actually be calling memmove. And I haven't actually looked into what's actually happening here, but let's just look at what could have happened by quickly defining our own version. So let's say I come up here and say, let's make our own memcopy, I'm gonna call it memcopy2 so it doesn't collide, it doesn't conflict with the systems memcopy. And then we'll have our destination, another void pointer, which is our source. And then our size underscore T, which is our number of bytes. I believe I got that right. And then we could implement this a few different ways, but let's just make our destination pointer and set that equal to dest. And let's do another temporary pointer for the source. And then down here, let's just do a quick for loop, go from zero to n minus one. And then for each of these, what we're gonna do is just say d i equals the ith element of s. Of course, some of you would be like, hey, why don't you use point arithmetic, whatever. Yes, we could do that. I'm doing this right now to make sure that I don't confuse anyone who is new to point arithmetic or memcopy. But yes, there are many different ways that I can implement this. This is not necessarily the best, 
but I hope it's fairly clear. Also, some of you may be wondering why I made these pointers right here. The main reason is just so I don't have to have a lot of casts in place because I wanna use these like character pointers, but they're being passed in as void pointers. And so anyway, I'm just trying to avoid casts. And now at this point, if I come down here and I say, let's use memcopy2. So we're using this memcopy instead of the systems memcopy and we make it. Then if we come down here, you can see that now we get very different and very incorrect results, right? So this is one of those cases, like I mentioned before, where you would not wanna use memcopy. Copy. You know, we got lucky and memcopy worked when we used the system's memcopy, but this is definitely the kind of situation where you would want to use mem move. So we'll put this back just so I don't forget it because I don't want to be sharing broken examples with you. But okay, so now at this point, you know the difference between the two, between memcopy, mem move, but why all the controversy? Why all the exclamation points? Let's talk about that for a second. Well, one argument that I've heard a lot, and I think this is the argument that the comment was pushing for, is that you should always just use memmove. Never use memcopy because there are cases where memcopy will not work, but there are no such cases where memmove breaks. Memmove is more general. So the argument goes, why not just use the more general option all the time? And of course that seems reasonable and I know people who do that, but there are also other arguments. Over the years, I have heard people say that memcopy is faster than memmove. And if you look at the two implementations of these functions side by side, you can see why they might say that. Without compiling this code or running it, we can see that memmove is longer, more code, and it's basically two different memcopy implementations with an if statement that tests to see if we have overlapping blocks. So it makes some intuitive sense that extra if statement might slow things down a tiny bit. In practice, of course, I haven't seen a real difference on many systems, memcopy and memmove call the exact same code. And I've even seen cases where memmove seemed a hair faster, but never any difference that really mattered to me. So I don't find that argument to be particularly compelling, but an argument that I do find more compelling is one about specificity and communicating your intent to other programmers and those that use your code. Because the reality is in my code, 99.99% of the time, I don't want to support overlapping blocks. I don't want overlapping copies. For me, it's an extremely rare case. Usually overlapping memory blocks is a bug in my programs. It's an accident. It's something I didn't mean to do. And when I use memcopy, I am communicating to you and to others using this code that I do not intend this code to be used with overlapping memory blocks. So that's my normal case. So memcopy is the one that I usually go with as a default because it's my normal case. Of course, on the other hand, if I ever have code that is supposed to support overlapping blocks, then I should be using memmove and I will use memmove. And to the reader of my code, now the use of memmove becomes a signal. I'm letting them know, I'm saying, hey, I use memmove. So these blocks could be overlapping. Just be aware of that. Let me try to illustrate this argument with another example. Let's say I told you, you should never use the word cat again because you might mistake a cat for a dog. So instead you should always use the word mammal. Mammal is always a fair drop-in replacement for cat. It's always accurate. It's always going to be correct, but it does make conversations more vague, more confusing, and a little bit less helpful. So the real question of course, at this point is which one is right? Which one is wrong? Which one is dangerous? And the answer is neither are. There's simply two different options, two different approaches that you can take and each have their own strengths and weaknesses. I definitely have my preferences and you see those preferences coming out in my videos. And of course I make mistakes. Sometimes I'm just in a hurry and I don't think about it. But I think the bigger point of this video is that most of the holy wars and tech diatribes you're gonna hear are really gonna end up in the same place. You end up with a lot of trade-offs, a lot of strengths and weaknesses, but very little good versus evil. Not so many commandments, just pros and cons that you need to be aware of so that you can use the tools available to you to create effective software. So my advice to you is when you run into something like this, take a deep breath, don't pick sides, but learn from both sides. There's probably a lesson buried in the diatribe and you'll be a better programmer and a happier person because of it. So thanks for being here. Now, if you don't mind, I have to go prepare some calories for a mammal. Meow.